May the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ that has been with us from our mother's womb up to now continue to be with us in Jesus' name. Beloved, we are speaking on the theme, Are Your Garments Spotless? You know, when you come to the world, there is a, a kind of garment for every institution. You meet someone and you wouldn't ask that who are you right away you meet him you know that he is a nurse or she is a nurse why because he or she is having a garment of the nurse you meet another person in black uniform top and down with the the cap or the uh, uh, hat and then you meet another one with a dressing that is green and at times it's a camouflage type you need no one to tell you that this is a police woman or man and this is a military man and but to you and i there is a garment that we did not you know uh, sew it ourselves yeah. we did not buy it ourselves but it's a free gift from a wonderful king of kings his name is jesus christ uh, from matthew chapter 22 11 to 14. beloved when i sat down analyzing this very chapter in matthew i began asking myself certain questions this parable of the wedding banquet the bible says there was a king as the lord brought out the parable who organized a banquet a wedding banquet for his son he did not just you know got up to throw that party or organize that wedding a party or banquet as we normally do he informed people he invited people they gave very positive answer i believe they told him on that day we will come even before the time the king relying on the answers that he received from the people he organized that banquet that wedding banquet uh, uh, of the sun everything was set on the table yes, waiters and waitresses were ready and he asked his servant go and tell the people that it is time for us to die but the unfortunate happened the bible says when the servants went they refused to come people who, was, who had already received invitation it was a very painful situation in fact it was a disgraceful situation but the bible says See. when the servants reported the case to the master the king he wasn't pleased with it at all and so he sent a second group and so the second batch went they went and said the same thing that the first servant said yeah. our king is uh, uh, ready he has prepared everything on the table waiting for you please come and enjoy it the bible says again he sent forth other servant saying tell them which are bidding behold i have prepared my dinner my oxen and my fatlings are killed and all things are ready come unto the marriage but the bible says they made funny out of that uh, uh, situation what the the, uh, the message the servant brought they, they, they took it as a light thing not that even they took it lightly alone but the bible says they maltreated them and afterward they killed the servants they were invited by the king some weeks or some days yeah, they couldn't different. tell him we cannot honor it but when it was time they yeah. turned their backs towards him and the bible says what happened the second time infuriated the, the, the king so much that he could not stand it he sent his army to go and kill all the people over there because you have refused to come fair enough eating is not for, by force and then if you have refused to come look at that you have not treated my my servants and you have killed them that is what some are doing today though they call themselves christians they were they were careless people and so now the king said so, i will never allow my food to go you know waste so he ordered again his servants when, when i was analyzing i saw the kind of patience this king is having uh, so distinct kind of patience yeah. because of the heart of the king Did by the third time he told his servant now go onto the street corners every common place bring all people whether good or bad 
That also baffles my mind so much. They brought the good and the bad. And they came, they were served, and they were enjoying the meal. A king came around. The Bible says when he was, you know, going through where, I mean, the banquet where they were eating, he spotted a certain man. He was different. So he went to him. And look at how he put the question. And he said to him, friend, how did you get in here without a wedding garment? He, he did not say enemy. Friend. Within this touched, with this, you know, uh, wretched, with this torn, with this dirty garment. How did you manage to come here? The man alone was without a wedding garment. The mind that we are having now, my dear one, Pray is no. it with the garment of God? The behavior that we put on at a certain point in time eh, where no church member is around, can we say that we are having a spotless garment? We want to have a spotless garment. Anyway. But when that document was brought to your office, you said until a weight is placed on it, it will not, I mean, never win. My dear one, our, our, our garment spotless. Are we ready that when the, the trumpet is to sound right now, we shall all make it? When the king saw this person, not in a wedding clothes, no. and he asked him how he managed to get there, no, we he, said, he said he saw there a man which had not on a wedding garment. And he asked him, how did you manage to come here? He was speechless. It was too late for him to give any excuse. As I said, excuse is a sin. My we can have a thousand and one excuses. Do you really know that what you are saying is not true? This man was speechless. No. And the king said, seven, bind this man hand and foot. Mm. A mm. I believe a very kind of sumptuous food that they were taking. No, what he I said is oxen and then fatlings have been killed and they are served on the table. And it was a buffet. It was something that, you know, one will serve you and you will not be satisfied. Take whatever you, you want no. to take. And that is what I believe the Bible says even when we are eating, we should eat to the glory of God. This man unfortunately did not do it to the glory of God. When they said they should bring anyone they, they will meet on the street and the corners of the city he joined the wagon and went and then he started enjoying it yeah. my dear one are we prepared with the spotless you know garment on us when we want to wear that you know spotless uh, dress garment we will go through certain ridicule certain tough times no but i tell you and in the end it will be very beneficial unto us. Amen. Why not the other people? Uh, they were in the wedding garment. They were that. in the prescribed garment. Oh, and yeah. so the king did not say anything to them. This but this man, I don't know his name. Uh, when we get up there, we will we'll find out his name. If, when you take your time and you look into the parable of the wedding banquet here, you see that it has two faces, spiritual and physical faces. So this garment, the, the, the spotless garment the Lord is talking about is having two faces. That is why some of us, we are able to portray, you know, as if there is nothing. Get by passing and the person begins to gossip about you. Well, forgetting that the Lord is everywhere. Do. Forgetting that whatever we have said, we're going to answer for it. That. Let's look at some of these spiritual and physical ones. When we read Zechariah chapter 3, verse 1 following, the Bible talks about a high priest called Joshua. I have thought this several times that it isn't the Joshua who led the Israelites into the promised land. So here we see Joshua the high priest. It wasn't of the physical garment that the Bible is talking about here. But that spiritual garment of Joshua, the Bible says it was filthy. So the enemy, Satan, was there. The, 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 the accuser of the brethren. That is his work that he has been doing all these years. But when we have the right garment upon us, that shines even more than the, the Shekinah glory 
Dear I one, say, he Emiliano. can never come closer to us. Because Jesus is with us. Jesus goes out with us. Comes back with us. He sleeps and wakes up with us. If we have Jesus in that manner, if we have that garment upon our lives, the accuser of the brethren will never have a part in our life. And so, the enemy appeared that no, this Joshua cannot be, you know, entertained as a high priest in the presence of God. And the Lord said, they should remove the angels, should remove the old garment and put on a new garment with a, a crown or turban on him. This indicates that there was a restoration in the life of the high priest Joshua. And so the enemy could not overcome Joshua, the high priest. He was able to join his colleague leaders that were trying to put up the broken walls and then the temple and whatever that took place there. He was a partaker of that because that God placed on him a new, you know, garment. Again, the scripture reminds us that we should clothe ourselves with virtues such as compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. You can read from uh, Colossians chapter 3, 12 to 14. Colossi that is a garment that he's talking about. Colossi spiritual garment. He's talking about putting on. This is not a physical, you know, attire that we are wearing. We have to put on this garment, the spiritual garments here, being it kindness, being it humility, being it gentleness, being it patience. Name them, my dear one. We need to put on these garments so as to make it possible, you know, into the celestial city. So when you read the scriptures from Revelation 19, verse 7 to 9. It says, when he took them, he, he granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen. The bride should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white. For the fine linen is the righteousness of saints. This is only possible with the blood of Jesus. That spots in our garments, that wrinkles in our garments, could only be taken away by the power of the blood of Jesus. That's why they sang it. There is power mighty in the blood. Today, it is there for us. It's still working. It's still working. Over 2,000 years still, it's still working. If only I am ready tonight, you are ready tonight. May the blood of Jesus wash us thoroughly and make us a gem unto God. It is enough to become ordinary Christian. It's enough. My dear, let's pu push it away. It is time for us to be like Jesus. To have the garment of Christ in and out of us. Again, when we read Isaiah chapter 61 verse 10, there is another spiritual exercise concerning this garment that the Lord is talking about here. When you come to some physical aspects in Exodus chapter 19 verse 10 following, why? God was coming to visit them. So God told Moses, go and tell them. This was a physical exercise they needed to do. They needed to wash their garment and prepare to meet the king of kings. In fact, the, the owner of the entire universe with human beings as like ants in his hand. He is coming to visit them. So God told Moses, let them wash themselves and prepare them to consecrate themselves. He is coming to visit them. Again, when you go to Exodus chapter 28, 39 to 41, verse 39 to 41, God told Moses to do this, you know, on his behalf, on his elder brother Aaron and, the, and, and his children, because they were going to serve as priests unto God and unto the people of God. And the Lord want to have that kind of, you know, interaction with you and I. Because Peter told us that we are a priesthood, royal priesthood. We are not ordinary. God doesn't play with, you know, uh, garments that are clean. He loves that. So you see, God was a person that gave the first garment unto Adam and Eve. The first garment. The garment of the man, I mean, man, as you say, Adam and Eve as man was not able to cover their nakedness. It was just a temporal thing, then it goes off. But in Genesis chapter 3, the Bible tells us God made a garment and placed it upon 
them to cover their nakedness. Now, the first time in Genesis 3 21, you can write it down, please. And let's quickly look at certain biblical significance of a garment. One, throughout the scriptures, garments often represent a person's identity, status, and spiritual condition. I've already said it that when you meet somebody who is a soldier, no one will tell you this man is a soldier. When you meet a nurse, no one should tell you. Hello. It's supposed to be like that for Christians. But the sadness of it is that on the part of Christians, yes, I believe uh, most of our ladies will testify to what I'm going to say. That some, you know, people meet you and they ask you, are you in the other uh, religion? Why? Is it not sad? That when a Christian lady dress well, someone will meet you and ask you, do you belong to that other region? Why? So what are some of the garments we need to know? Clothing supposed to serve as an identity. As we always say, we are addressed by our dressing. You are addressed by your dressing. You need not advertise for anybody to know that you are a Christian or not. Mm -hmm. I don't need my, 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 you know, uh, picture on a, a, the, the church's soundboard for people to know that I'm a pastor. No. Your behavior, your clothing, the way you dress, people will address you. So I said one, once upon a time, an evangelist's wife who was late to a meeting because the husband has taken leave, he got to a point, the wife got to a point in a car that she was sitting in and then there was a serious traffic. She got down just to go and beg them that, oh, we are doing this work here. I'm the wife of the evangelist. He got there and then opened the mouth and a man looked at him and said, what? You? You? You are the wife of the man. A harlot like you. Why? You are dressed by the way you dress. Again, we have uh, uh, the garments of righteousness. As we read earlier on, and now you can add Ephesians chapter 4, verse 24 to read. Again, the garment of praise is one, you know, of the garment that is very powerful. In a biblical concept is very powerful. The Lord has told us when we worship Him very well, our uh, worship doesn't go through. Uh, certain protocols. No, it goes straight to him. Oh, now, sorry, yes, sorry, that list, tall list of what I need this, so oh, I not need that, oh, I need that, oh. it goes through protocol before it gets to him. So, yes, oh, sorry, the government of sir. praise is one of the powerful biblical concepts. And the last one that I want to touch on is the robes of white garment of splendor. Uh, Revelation uh, 7 verse 14. In conclusion, the biblical meaning of garment and come, I mean, encompasses various aspects of our spiritual journey and relationship with God. It reminds us to clothe ourselves with godly attributes such as righteousness and praise and to seek forgiveness and transformation through Christ. By understanding these symbolic representations, we can deepen our faith and strive to live according to God's teaching. Hello. Hello. May God help us that this garment that we are talking about, Hello. if I'm not having some, if mine is spotted, if mine is torn, like the man found at the banquet hall, if mine is wretched, may God have mercy upon me. May God have mercy upon you as well.